blessed day, students, praying that you all are in good health, safe and sound in your own home. I am really glad that you still find time to listen to this video lesson, and that is highly appreciated. Anyways, today is another day to learn more about practical research, quantitative research in your case. So, let us start. Today, we will learn the sampling procedure in quantitative research. The objectives of this lesson are to define sample, population, sample size, and sampling frame, calculate sample size using Slovin's formula, and design a sampling plan based on a hypothetical population. In qualitative research, the researcher has full control of the number of participants needed for his or her study to obtain enough data to sufficiently describe the phenomenon of interest and address the research question. But unlike qualitative research, quantitative research focuses more on the accurate number of sample size. This lesson would help you understand how to determine sample size using the Slavin's formula. But before you proceed to the lesson, take note of the following terms first. Sample refers to an individual that represents the entire population of target respondents of the study. This is the subgroup of the population. Population, it refers to a group of individuals that the researcher is interested in studying and usually has common or similar characteristics. Sample size, it refers to the number of elements in the population that is included in the study. While sampling frame refers to a complete list of all cases in the population from which the sample will be drawn. For example, master list of grade 12 students in a certain school. The researchers must know the sample size of their study. It is a waste of resources if the researchers include all the elements in their target population. According to Prieto, Novell, and Carey in 2017, the following are some reasons for the use of samples. First, using sample saves time compared to complete census. Second, using sample saves money because it is less costly. Third, using sample allows more particular attention to be given to several elements than doing a census. And lastly, using sample can lessen the sampling error in the survey. Sampling strategy is an important step to ensure that your data truly reflects the characteristics of your target population. Mukherjee in 2019 cites steps in formulating sampling plan in quantitative research. First, define your sample and target population. Most of the time, it is hard to survey all elements of your target population, so you may come up with a smaller number that may represent your target population. For example, it may not be feasible to visit all 10,000 students in your target school. Instead, you'd want to choose a smaller sample that would be representative of the population and reflect its characteristics. Second, define your sample size. There are no strict rules for selecting a sample size. You can decide based on the objectives of the project, time available, and budget. In order to come up with accurate sample size, you will need to determine the degree of accuracy that you want to achieve. For this, you'll need to establish the confidence interval or the margin of error and confidence level of your sample. The confidence level tells you how sure you want to be and is expressed as a percentage. It represents how often the responses from your selected sample reflect the responses of the total population. Thus, a 95% confidence level means you can be 95% certain. The lower the confidence level, the less certain you will be. There are many formulas used in computing your sample size, and one of those is the Slavin's formula. 
3. Define your sampling technique. There are two sampling techniques used, uh, you will use to select sample from your target population. The sampling technique that's right for you depends on the nature and, ob of, and objectives of your project. So sampling techniques is divided into two types, the probability sampling or the random sampling, which gives equal chances of selection to all elements of the population and non-probability sampling or the non-random sampling is an unequal selection of samples from the population. Solving for an accurate sample size needs a deep understanding of statistics. There are a lot of formulas used in determining the sample size of quantitative research. One of the most common is statistical formulas used by the researchers in determining sample size is the Slavin's formula. Slavin's formula is a, a statistical formula used to obtain an accurate sample size or N given the population, capital letter N, and margin of error or E. The margin of error is the allowable error margin in research. Slavin's formula calculates the number of samples required when the population is too large to directly sample every member. The sample size using Slavin's formula can be obtained using this formula. Small letter n equals capital letter n divided by 1 plus n e squared, where n is the sample size, that is the small letter n, and the capital letter n is the total population, and e is the margin of error. Example number 1. Mr. X conducts his study on Barangay Kanyogan, Pasig City. The total number of residences is 3,800 according to the residence list in Barangay. Mr. X uses a 5% margin of error to come up with the total number of participants of his study, which is 362. From this example, you can say that the population is 3,800. The sampling frame used is the residence list in Barangay Kanyogan, and the sample size obtained is 362 using Slovin's formula with 5% margin of error. Example number two. A researcher wants to conduct a survey. So the population of a big school where the researcher wishes to get his respondents is 11,000. Find the sample size if the margin of error is 5%. Step 1 is to identify the givens. So, N, uh, we will have to find the sample size and the number of uh, population, where the population is 11,000, indicated by capital letter N. Step 2, and E, by the way, is 5% need to convert into 0 0.05 or in decimal form. Step 2 is to use the Slovin's formula and substitute the given data. So we can have n equals 11,000, which is the population, divided by 1 plus 11,000 multiplied by 0 0.05 or the decimal form of E or the margin of error, which is 0 0.05 squared. And then, step 3 is to solve the denominator part first, then follow PEMDAS. Meaning N equals 11,000 divided by 1 plus 11,000 times 0 0.0025 n equals 11,000 plus 1 plus 27.5 then n equals 11,000 divided by 28.5 then step 4 is to divide the data to get the sample size n equals 11,000 divided by 28.5 n will yield 385.96 rounded up to 386. 
Then the sample size that the researchers need is 386. Take note that if your final answer is in decimal form, always round it up to whole number. Okay, so let's have another example. In your study, the size of the population is 10,000. What is the size of your sample if you allow a 2% margin of error? Step 1, identify the given. So we are about to get the sample size. The population is 10,000. The E or the margin of error is 2%. And then convert it into decimal form, which is 0 0.02. Step 2, use the Slovin's formula, then substitute the given data. We will come up with n equals 10,000 divided by 1 plus 10,000 multiplied by 0 0.02 squared. Step 3, solve the denominator part first, then follow PEMDAS. n equals 10,000 divided by 1 plus 10,000 times 0 0.0004. n equals 10,000 divided by 1 plus 4 will yield n equals 10,000 divided by 5. Step 4, divide the data to get the sample size, or n equals 10,000 divided by 5, and n equals 2,000. The sample size that you need is 2,000. Now, this table could help you on deciding the sample size in a specific number of population and margin of error, as cited by Sevilla, Colombo Plan Staff College in 2018. This is the sample size for a specified margin of errors. Take note that the asterisk presented in the table shows that assumption of normal approximation is poor. Thus, the sample formula is not applicable. Let's say, for example, we have... Um, 3,000 population for negative 2 or positive 2% the margin of error we will yield, uh, we have to get 1,364 samples um, another example for 8,000 population and we allow 5% margin of error we will need 381 respondents and so on and so forth That ends our lesson today. Thank you for listening and see you next time.